This is the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast, episode 168. Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 168 of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Podcast. Hope you're having a great week so far, and thanks so much for tuning in. If you're brand new to the show, my name is Nick Manella. I'm the creator and host of this show, and uh, we try to bring you a little bit of jazz every week, something to make you better, something to improve your playing. So before we jump into the episode, a little bit of housekeeping. You can grab the PDF to this episode, and you're definitely going to want to get the PDF to this one, and every single other episode that we've ever done over at our Patreon site. And you can find that by going to 10minutejazzlesson.com and clicking on one of the Patreon links, or you can go to patreon.com slash 10 minute jazz lesson. And for only three bucks a month, you can sign up to be a supporter of the show and get your hands on a bunch of learning materials that are really going to benefit you. So got to give a quick shout out as we usually do to all the people that have signed up this week. We got a, another bunch of people that have decided to become patrons here. So thank you to Manolo, Yuki, Felix, and Robert. Thank you guys so much for joining up, becoming part of the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson family, and I hope that you are enjoying your materials uh, that you get with that membership. So again, only three bucks a month, patreon.com slash 10 Minute Jazz Lesson, 10 Minute Jazz Lesson.com, click on one of the Patreon links and get yourself signed up. All right, let's jump into today's episode. Very excited to show you some Things related to double time, which we've been talking a lot about lately, over our tune of the month, which is the great Tad Dameron uh, composition called Lady Bird. This is one of the first tunes that I ever learned, uh, and it contains a lot of devices in it that I think are really useful uh, to the jazz musician looking to improve upon any number of things. So first of all, it's a short form, which is kind of nice. It's only 16 bars, so it's less to keep track of. Um, Makes this tune a little bit easier to memorize, which is always great. And the changes are really logical. Um, There's a lot of two five ones, a lot of these circle of fourth cycle kind of things that we talk about a lot. And I do think that this is one tune that everybody out there should know. Everybody should know the tune Lady Bird and be able to play it. Now, we have already done an episode on the last two measures of this tune, the turnaround at the end. But that's not what we're going to be focusing on this week. We're going to be thinking about the entire tune, and we're going to be thinking about using it as a vehicle for some double time practice. That's really the point of this tune of the month. And you'll notice that I do bring up this tune a lot because I think it's such a fantastic vehicle for a lot of different things. And that's why I'm so grateful that my teacher taught this this tune to me so early and, uh, you know, forced me to do some serious work over it because it did prepare me for a lot of other tunes. So that's why we really like this tune. And that's why I like to, you know, present it to you guys in multiple episodes and in multiple different ways. So let's start by going over the tune and just talking about the form of it and uh, what the structure of the chords are first. OK, so we start in the key of C. So we just start with two measures of a C major 7 chord, concert C major 7 chord. And then another measure of that. And then immediately we go into a 2-5-1 in the key of E flat. So we go to an F minor 7 chord. And then we go to a B flat 7 chord. But then we use a backdoor cadence to get back to the key of C. Now, if you don't know what a backdoor cadence is, go find our episode on backdoor cadences. We do an entire episode on it, and we'll explain it there. You can use this search function on our website. If you go to our homepage, there is a little search box where you can search for any episode you're looking for. So let's go over those first four bars again. So we have C for two measures. 
Then that goes to a 2-5 in the key of E flat. But then that back door is to C. Now what we do is we move into a 2-5 in the key of A flat major. And then we do actually go to A flat major here. So that's pretty simple, just a 2-5-1 in the key of A flat. Then we play A flat for a couple bars. Then we do a 2-5 in the key of G. And then instead of going to G, we kick off another 2-5 in the key of C. So the D7 goes to its parallel minor chord, goes to D minor 7. And then that kicks off our 2-5 in the key of C. And then we do that cool turnaround. And if you don't know what this turnaround is, just go back and listen to the episode on the Ladybird turnaround. So we get these really awesome four chords. So that is the structure of the tune. If you've got the PDF in front of you, you can see all those chords actually written out. Let me uh, put on a play along of the form one time just to let you hear it go by in real time. We'll just listen to it once so you can hear all those chords that I just explained, but hear them actually in real time. Okay, so I always suggest doing that, like just listening to the chords go by, you know, a little bit, because it really familiarizes yourself with the underlying harmony without you having to do anything over the top of it. So you're not improvising, you're not doing any of this stuff, but you're hearing the harmony. Sometimes I'll just put play alongs on and, and let them play. And I think that that has helped my ears a lot uh, so that when I hear a chord progression, I know what it is. All right, so anyways, so how are we going to use this as a vehicle for double time? Well, here's what I really like about this tune. Generally, in these four bar phrases, the first half of the four bar phrase is like a static major chord. So in the case of the first, second, and third phrase, it's, you know, concert C major 7 for the first two phrases and concert A flat major 7 for the third phrase, that's the first two bars. And then generally, the second half of those four measure phrases is reserved for a cadence, you know, and whether that cadence is going to a backdoor uh, resolution or a front door resolution, it doesn't really matter. Those are generally reserved for two five ones, right? So this makes a really nice dichotomy here. And you remember on the episodes I did on double time, I said to start by playing shorter double time lines, meaning that you're not trying to play double time for an entire chorus or anything like that. That's not gonna go well for you. I suggested that you start plugging in some double time lines that you write yourself into shorter stretches, right? So what I'm gonna suggest on this tune, and in fact, what the etude is all about that I've written for you is, when you feel ready to start composing your own double time lines, I'm going to want you to write two measure double time lines. And you're going to do two choruses. In the first chorus, you're going to use double time line over the first two measures of each four bar phrase. And then you're going to rest for two measures. So you're going to play two measures of double time. You're probably going to almost lose it towards the end of that two measures. And then you're gonna be able to rest and sort of gather yourself for two measures and then start the next two bar phrase of double time stuff. And this will start to build your ability to play longer and longer lines that run into more and more measures and more and more chord changes. So then the second chorus, we're just gonna flip that. So you're gonna rest for the first two measures. Then you're gonna play two measures of double time 
rest, two measures of double time, rest, two measures of double time, all the way through the second chorus, all right? So the reason I like this is that in the first chorus, you're figuring out how to play interesting double time material over a static chord, right? So you have to figure out how to get around that chord using 16th notes, twice as many notes as you normally do when you're playing your eighth note material. You gotta figure out how to make that interesting over one static chord. And then the second chorus, you're trying to figure out how to write interesting, long two, five, one double time lines. So we had, I had mentioned that a little bit, right, in the double time episodes, where I wanted you to write some double time licks over one measure two five ones, but this is just the natural extension of that. So now you need to figure out how to write some double time lines over two measure two five ones, which is a lot harder. So you really have to use your knowledge of chromaticism and bebop in order to make this stuff more interesting or interesting enough to get you through a two measure two five one. So that's your challenge for this week. And you can look at the etude and literally just practice playing double time along with me or, you know, putting on a play along and then practicing that double time material that I've written out for you, which is going to be available in every key. So start there, start there, get comfortable, make sure your time is good, all this stuff that we talked about on our two double time episodes. And then I would like you, this is your assignment, I would like you to sit down and write out your own two choruses, just like I did, first playing the first two bars of every four bar phrase, double time, and then the second chorus, reversing that. And then the final thing that you can do if you get that far, is you can start improvising using that same structure. Play double time for two measures, see if you can pull it off, rest, gather yourself. Play double time again for two measures, rest, okay? So it's a natural progression between reading mine, writing and playing your own, and then ultimately improvising is the end goal as it always is, all right? So have fun with this. Let me know if you have any questions. The best place to drop those questions is in the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group. You can just type that into the search bar on Facebook. Join up and you'll be a member. All right. Hope you have a great weekend, everybody. Hope you like this episode. I'm going to play the etude here at the end, as I normally do on these episodes. And remember to go and grab the PDF so you can start studying some of these double timelines. All right. We'll talk to you guys next week. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk soon. Bye.